This is the Washington Times front page for Thursday, October 27th, 2022. Thanks for joining us. I'm George Gerbo. Third party and independent candidates in several states have picked up enough support to influence the outcomes of some close Senate races. In Georgia, Susan Fericchio reports Libertarian Party candidate Chase Oliver pulled in 4.6% of the vote in a Trafalgar Daily Wire poll released this week. Oliver's pool of support is significant enough to force the two leading candidates, Republican Herschel Walker and Democratic incumbent Raphael Warnock, into a December runoff if neither reaches 50% of the vote on November 8th. In Nevada, Libertarian Neil Scott and Independent candidate Barry Lindemann are also on the ballot. Voters also have an extra choice. None of these candidates, a non-binding option that could draw away thousands of dissatisfied voters from frontrunners Adam Laxalt and incumbent Catherine Cortez Masto. All of those options could tip the outcome of the race, which is considered a toss-up between the Democrat Cortez Masto and Republican Laxalt. In Pennsylvania, where Democratic Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman leads by about one percentage point over Republican Mehmet Oz, three other candidates on the ballot are drawing a small fraction of support that could influence the outcome. Speaking of Fetterman, he and his team have set out to stop the political bleeding after his debate performance against Oz this week. Seth McLaughlin reports Fetterman, who suffered a stroke in May, struggled to give coherent responses, verbalize his thoughts, and complete his sentences during the debate. Fetterman supporters blame those moments on debate organizers and a faulty closed captioning system. None of it has been enough to overcome the general sentiment that Fetterman is on shakier ground in the race after the debate. Staying with the midterms, Stephen Dynan reports the U.S. Chamber of Commerce can't seem to find as many candidates to back in this year's congressional elections. The chamber was betrayed by Democrats it backed in 2020, who then voted against key chamber priorities. It's also been appalled by the post-2020 election behavior of some of the Republicans that it had backed. That has led to a major retrenchment for the nation's largest business group, which endorsed in more than 220 races just two years ago. As of this week, the chamber had endorsed in fewer than 80 races, and the number of Democrats it has endorsed dropped from 30 to 10. You can read all of these stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash front page. You can also find the entire lineup of news, commentary, and sports podcasts at WashingtonTimes.com slash podcasts. Iran has rapidly and unexpectedly emerged as Russia's most reliable wartime partner, providing drones and missiles for its attacks on Ukrainian civilians and on-the-ground technical support for its flight operators. Ben Wolfgang reports the growing partnership and Iran's status as a borderline active participant in the war in Ukraine have sparked questions that stretch far beyond the conflict. Foreign policy analysts say Iran's hardline religious leaders have made a calculated choice to cast their lot with Russia, both as a way to divert Western attention away from the Middle East and as an attempt to weaken U.S. power abroad. The Kremlin's increasing reliance on Iranian drones and other hardware also gives Iran's military leaders feedback on how their equipment performs on the battlefield. That could prove invaluable if and when Iran needs to use those capabilities in a large-scale war of its own. And finally, a number of leaks from the Justice Department have emerged ahead of the midterm elections, with some legal analysts saying they're designed to remind voters about the investigations of former President Trump. How much it's impacting voters is an open question, but Jeff Mordock reports some veteran prosecutors and political players say the leaks are designed to keep Trump's legal problems on voters' minds. A Justice Department spokesperson referred all questions to its Inspector General's office, which did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Find all of today's front page stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash front page or on the Washington Times app, and find us wherever you get your podcasts. Just search Washington Times in any major podcast app. You can also find us on Twitter and Instagram at Wash Times for breaking news, sports, commentary, and more. For the Washington Times, I'm George Gerbo.